Assalamu alaikum. In today's class, we're gonna cover two fundamental things related to soil. We're gonna start with a brief on the soil formation processes that lead to the formation of soil. Then we're gonna see something else that comes with the horizons. It is the lowercase or the small letters. So we know that when we have horizons like A, B, C, and so on, there are also comes with it some small letters and these indicates or have different meanings or add additional information to the horizons. Without further ado, let's start the class. In the previous lecture, we have seen that during the development of the soil horizons, there were things were added, others might be lost from the soil, other things might be translocated or let's let's say moved within the soil while others were like transformed from one form to another these four different things are called the soil formation processes now let's start each one of them individually now when we look at this slide you would see that you have a soil profile you have a soil okay so how addition happens addition happens for example when you add something from outside into the soil for example like adding the organic materials or the rain it's entering into the soil or when you irrigate the soil or when you add fertilizer or even when you yourself adding a soil to that particular place this is addition addition sometimes can happens from below the surface for example, like the movement of water through capillarity from the bottom to the top. This is still addition. Losses when you lose something entirely from the soil, like when the rain happens and the, wa and the water start flowing over the surface, you might lose some of the soil or the minerals or the organic materials from the top and it will flow with the water from that place. or you might lose them from down also. For example, some of the materials can be moved from the soil and lost, for example, through leaching into the groundwater. Now, translocation, as we said, that it is basically the movement within the, within the soil. Some of the materials can be moved from top to the bottom, like what we saw during the formation of the E horizon and the B horizon. Materials has been lost from the topsoil like organic matter, clay or iron and accumulated into, into the B horizons. And translocation sometimes can happen horizontally. I mean that it can move things within the layer hor horizontally in a parallel way. So it can move it from point X to point, to point Y. Transformation is the process of converting it from one form into another. When water, for example, react with these minerals, some of the minerals would be dissolved. And therefore it can react with others and therefore it will be transformed to create a new type of minerals. Organic materials also when they are decomposed from plant material into organic matter, they are also transformed from a solid form like this into a very fine, a very fine material. So transformation describes the conversion from one form into, into. Now, to give you even further information, let's look at the definition of each one. Again, transformation, when you transform things, the chemical and the physical modification of that thing. For example, Physically, it can happen when you transform it from this particular size, from 2 mm into a 0 0.005, it's also a transformation process. You break it down from this side into a smaller size. This is physically. Chemically, when you change it from one form into another, another form, from this soluble form into this solid form, and so on. Translocation, the movement. Or translocation is the movement of organic material and inorganic material horizontally and vertically as you saw from the previous slide. Addition when you add things from outside source like addition of the blind material or irrigation and so on and so on. Loss, 
losses when you lose things from the from the soil either as a runoff or or leaching now we reached into the last part of the lecture which described basically the lower case or the small letters that comes with the horizon now look at look with me at this picture you have basically three different or four different layers you have a horizon you have e horizon you have b horizon and you have c horizon but if you look at the b horizon it's given with a little layer it's given a t now what does this t mean and why it has been added to the b horizon look at this slide we can call these small letters as subordinate distinction but don't worry about the term subordinate distinction what i want you to know that these small letters which are added into the main horizon basically gives more information about this horizon for example when we added a t t means accumulation of clay because you know that b horizon it's formed basically from accumulation so it's accumulation of what so if you see bt you know that mm, this is a b horizon with a clay accumulation while when you see a bk you would know that this is a b horizon with carbonate accumulation sometime these letters also describe the condition like cm which means cementation like this is a c horizon that is also already having a soil but this soil if you touch it it's hard and almost cemented and almost about forming forming a rock To give you even further and more information these small letters can come with any horizon with any horizon and basically you have to memorize the ones which i tick them by by a green tick but don't worry the process of memorization is very very easy the easiest part to memorize it is basically by understanding what does it mean and when to use it so I list for you three different things down below, below the table. You would see that these small letters can be used to describe three things. Number one, the degree of decomposition. And when we say the degree of decomposition, it only comes with the O horizon, with the O horizon. So you remember from the first slides where we define that we can find O with I or A or E. It describes the decomposition degree. So if you, for example, look at O horizon, O, I, and go into the table and find I, you will find that I means organic matter slightly decomposed, which means it's an organic matter horizon. It's an O horizon with a slightly decomposed materials. You can distinguish the plant and the animal parts. Whereas if you look at O, E, and go into the table, and look for E, you would find that E means organic matter intermediate decomposition. So this is an O horizon with intermediate decomposition. All right. So that's why you would see that I, A and E only comes with O horizon and it describes basically the decomposition rate of the organic material at that O horizon. Now, Secondly, these letters also can be used to describe physical or the chemical properties or the condition of that particular horizon. For example, if you look at T, T in the table means accumulation of clay. If you look at N, it's accumulation of sodium. If you look at Y, it's accumulation of gypsum. If you look at Z, it's accumulation of salt. If, so all of these describes the chemical composition of that particular horizon. Now T and Y can, and Z can come with any horizon. For example, if you remember the previous slide, we have BT. So that's a B horizon with a clay accumulation. You can have, for example, you can have, for example, C n which describe a c horizon with sodium accumulation or c z which describe a c horizon with salt accumulation so that's how you use it 
Sometimes these letters like M for example describe the condition of that horizon. For example, if you have a C horizon, but that C horizon is given by M, it means that it's a C horizon with almost undergoing cementation processes. That means it's already gonna be cemented hard and it might be converted into rocks after some time. G for example describe the condition, the waiting condition, the saturation condition of that horizon. So we only is, use G when we describe a horizon that is for most of the time saturated. يعني بنقول بالعربي خرسان بالماي. It's always saturated with water and we describe it as as glaying. G. The last use of this letter can be to describe the management part. For example, if you have a a horizon at the top and you know the top soil usually we plow it نحرف ف we can describe this by giving it a p the letter p which describe the plowing now p for most of the times only comes with the horizons that happen of the surface why because biologic plowing only happens at the top soil it doesn't happen at the deep 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 soil it cannot reach deep soil. We don't have to, to do plowing deep into the soil. We only do it at the top for most of the cases to increase the aeration, to make it even, to make the soil a little bit loose so the water and things can enter into the soil, to make it easier for the root to, to grow and so on. That's why we, we, we do plowing for the soil. So P described the blowing and it's basically a management. It's basically something that we do we do with the soil. So that's how you can memorize these these little little letters. You describe them as as based on their on their uses. Now to give you farther things, if you look at this as this picture, you would see that it has how many if I ask you how many master horizon it has? Well, think about it. The master horizons, is we know them, they are basically six types. So if you look at this picture, you have A, then you have E, then you have B, and then you have C. So we have one, two, three, four master horizon, A, E, B, C. You see that now? Not all the horizons exist, only four. But if you look just specifically at B, you would find that B is given by the small letter BH and the lower one is given by BS. So each one of these small letters describe, describe something. So if you go back to the table, you would see that, for example, you would see what H and S and S mean. Now, why I don't explain them to you? Because you don't have to memorize the letter H and S. But you can refer to the table and you would see that each of the small letter if you go to this last uh, if you go to this last profile you would find it's a profile which has been excavated in nevada in the us which has a similar condition to to uman it's an arid 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 area and if you look at it you would see that how many master horizon we have think about it for a moment then you would find that we have three only a b and c but if you look at b and c you would find that the first b is given by w then the other one is given by bk now you should know what is k because k is indicated in the accumulation of it's a b horizon with accumulation of carbonate and then you have c it's another horizon but it's given the same letter it's given k c k because this is a c horizon having the properties of the C horizon, but, but it has an accumulation of, of carbonate. So that's how you use these small letters. Now, I'm sure that you know how the soil is formed. You know the soil formation processes. You know the six master horizons, and you know when to use and how to use the small, small letter letters, which we call them the subordinate. I hope that you enjoyed this lecture and you've learned new things about the soil. So see you inshallah in the discussion session and till that time, have a good day. Bye.